Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, today, we are doing our research live moment on a paper titled Effects of Upper and Lower Cervical Spinal Manipulative Therapy on Blood Pressure and Heart Rate Variability in Volunteers and Patients with Neck Pain, a Randomized Controlled Crossover Preliminary Study. Lots and lots of words there. Um, and actually, this paper has lots of facets to it. It has lots of interesting little tidbits. Um, so I'm going to give a quick breakdown on it. Um, and really, the the uh, the takeaways of this paper are, um, you know, they adjusted the neck and they were looking to well. And this was done uh, not uh, necessarily by chiropractors, but more. Um, uh, by manipul, it was more of a manipulation rather than a specific adjustment. Um, so they were working on the upper neck, the upper cervical spine, and the lower cervical spine. So down here, and they saw changes in how the heart rate was, uh, and how the um, blood pressure was, and then they also saw changes in neck pain, which that's kind of uh, you know clear is uh, you have a problem in the neck, you adjust it and. That might help. Um, but why did it help with uh, changes in heart rate and blood pressure? Um, well, let's talk about it. So in the, the uh, central or in the nervous system, we have, and I've broken this down before, but we have two main systems. So we have the central nervous system and we have the peripheral nervous system. And so that looks something like this, where we have whoop, a little out of focus there. See if it'll focus. Yep, good. So we have these two different systems. We have the central nervous system and we have the peripheral nervous system. And the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, but the PNS is made up of basically it breaks down into two different divisions: the autonomic nervous system, which has the sympathetic and parasympathetic, the fight or flight, and the rest or digest. So that's what we're going to talk about today because. When we look here, um, we've got the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems that control how the heart rate goes. So accelerated heart and then slows the heart, right? And that's parasympathetic and sympathetic. And then it also does a lot of other things on the inside like digestion, uh, breathing, uh, glandular secretion, um, all kinds of things, immune function. And so what we found is that uh, the receptors or the some of the main uh, nuclei of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems are actually in the spine uh, or in the spinal cord in the spine. And so um, as we adjust, we can actually have a change in the parasympathetic and sympathetic parts of the nervous system. And then we want to determine, are we making a change? Are we making a good change, bad change? What's happening? Um, so we want to uh, measure sympathetic and parasympathetic tone, which is you know, how fast the heart rate might be, what the blood pressure might be. Um, there's many other ways to, to measure the sympathetic and parasympathetic system, but those tend to be very um, measurable uh, criteria. And so that's what they studied in this paper. And they, they found that HRV is a good way to, at least that was one of the outcomes of this paper, was that HRV is a good way to measure the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. And so this is actually from a good friend of ours, uh, Dr. John Chung uh, down in Flor Florida. He does a lot of uh, blogging and, and writing on uh, the nervous system and upper cervical chiropractic care. Uh, but this diagram talks about it well. So the autonomic nervous system, we have the stress and we have the rest side, which is sympathetic, parasympathetic. And then this is this word, HRV, heart rate variability. Well, what does that mean? But what we see is that when we have good heart rate variability, uh, as heart rate variability increases, we have long-term increased resilience and performance. And when we have low heart rate variability, variability we have long-term chronic stress and illness. Um, and those are regulated by that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. What is HRV? So HRV, here. Um, now, HRV is a very complicated, uh, there's many facets to it. There's many way, different ways to measure it. Um, and this uh, picture is just kind of a quick glimpse. But basically, it's measuring over time 
how the heart is beating. So the pattern, the, the uh, QPRS wave. Um, and so what we've got are these, this pattern that you see, you know, most people are familiar with this pattern and you can measure. So the first one is 0.659 seconds uh, with 70 beats per minute. The second one is seven, uh, 0.793 seconds at 76 beats per minute. And then the third one is 0.726 seconds at, uh, I think that's 63 or 83 beats per minute. Uh, the point is, and that's over two and a half seconds, so HRV uh, measures over time the variability in how the heart is beating the wave. And um, the point of that and the, the, the beauty of that is that when your heart has actually a variable pattern, they see that people have more health. Their, their long-term uh, stress adapt adaptation is better. Um, a heart just does better. The body does better. Um, and when it's more consistent, the same, um, less variability, then it actually starts to break down. The health starts to break down. So HRV tends to be a good way to measure how your nervous system is doing, uh, and that's what they did in this paper. So the the outcome of the paper, uh, and this is the uh, the uh, title here, and, and the outcome of the paper was that um, down here we had uh, uh, the HRV, uh, or sorry, not HRV, but blood pressure was systolic and diastolic are the two different um, uh, measurements there. And we saw a good change in systolic, uh, change in the systolic blood pressure that came down. Uh, and that was when they adjusted the upper cervical spine as well as lower, lower cervical spine, but they saw a better change in the upper cervical uh, correction and or, or manipulation and uh, they compared the findings to some of the other studies that, that have been done on blood pressure in the past one of them being dr backris and dr dick holt's paper uh earlier on in the early 2000s uh and this was done this paper was done in 2014 uh, so it was right around the same time that dr dick holt's and dr backris did their paper um and so the 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 finding was interesting because they were trying to reproduce or replicate and see, you know, if they could reproduce similar findings to what Dr. Dickholz did. And and uh, the interesting thing about that is Dr. Dickholz's paper was very well done with a prestigious center in Chicago that that Dr. Bakras, um, a medical doctor that uh, measures blood pressure on his patients and and treats, uh, you know, high blood pressure, hi hypertension, and uh, hypotension, cardiovascular guy. And uh, they found good change in upper cervical correction, uh, not only bringing uh, hypertension down, so blood pressure down, but hypotensive patients up to more of a normal uh, place. And what they found in this paper was that it, they didn't find the same thing. And so that's interesting because Dr. Dickholz uh, was doing specific upper cervical work, and this was more of a manipulation, uh, less specific. Uh, uh, technique and so that might be the difference there it does you know they, they don't really say they don't have a, a uh, uh, story there on it but um, but that's my theory right is is you know if you have a more specific correction in the upper neck that upper cervical chiropractic care may have a uh, more sustained and better lasting effect if you want to uh, try to lower the uh, the sympathetic uh, or sorry yeah the sympathetic tone in that that uh, spinal cord up there and so basically the results of this paper were blood pressure uh, did change uh, it came more to to a normal value as well as hrv changed um, which is good and then that the neck pain so it was it was uh tested uh, on the numerical rating scale the neck pain came down to, i think it was th uh, two or three points uh, on each on the average uh, patient so good changes in neck pain heart rate variability and blood pressure so getting your neck adjusted may do many things for you not just help with neck pain obviously it can help with that but it can help with things like uh, blood pressure hrv um, other internal functions that may be controlled by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system because when you adjust that spine it's going to affect how the nerves function that control all of this on the inside. Uh, so again, you know, if you're if you are struggling with neck pain, uh, there may be other things going on, and uh, uh, an upper cervical chiropractor is a good place to uh, to visit and see if they can help, as well as uh, 
you know, if there are other things in your physiology that are off, upper cervical chiropractic care and chiropractic care in general uh, can help that sympathetic, parasympathetic tone balance and the, the central nervous system balance out and, and function better. Uh, so if you have questions about that, uh, give us a call at 603-380-9184. And uh, I'm Dr. Tyler Evans from Arete Chiropractic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I hope you have a great day. All righty, bye-bye.